Well, folks, let me be quite clear. We have not seen this confusing of a financial markets in several decades. I'm about to take you through the most mixed signals you'll ever <laughs> see out there in the finance market, and we are going through it right now. I'm gonna take you through a lot of stocks in today's video, a lot of things going on in the market. Indexes that now are negative for the year. We're gonna talk about TLT in this video. We're gonna talk about what's going on in the bond market. It's a mess, folks. It is an absolute mess and a confusing mess at that. It would be nice if everything was just simple, uh, but I can tell you this market, it's anything but simple. And we're also gonna talk about how to approach a market like this, where you're getting this many mixed signals of like, you get something good, something bad, something good, something bad, something super scary, something a little optimistic, okay? A lot to go through. I wanna get straight into this. I appreciate y'all joining me as always. Thank you so much for being here, folks, and thank you for being subscribed to the channel, okay? So right off the bat, we're going to talk, we're starting out at the TLT, okay? The iShares, 20-year treasury bond ETF. A lot of people have been buying TLT specifically really over the past, I would say, 12 months. A lot of people have been trying to time this baby out, hoping it you know, sees a really nice pop, and it's just... It hasn't, it hasn't come to fruition and, and this baby just keeps hitting lows and lows and lows. And you look at where TLT was back, you know, going into 2021, 172. Now this baby's down to 86. Incredible volatility really in the TLT recently in the past two years or so, right? And you go ahead and take a peek back. We're kind of pricing on TLT that we were back in, uh, let's call it around summer 2007, if not fall 2007, which is definitely a scary thing because we know what happened after 2007, right? And there's definitely some people that draw parallels of 2023 kind of being a 2007 type year and thinking like 2008 is going to be 2024 essentially, right? So that's a situation we have playing out here. There's just no signs of a bottom in TLT right now. And with what's going on in the bond market, it seems like, you know, I even heard Rick, Rick Santelli talking about this today on CNBC, who's really like a, you know, an expert in this field. And he was saying, you know, don't step in and, and do anything here right now in regards to this. You got to let this whole bond market, treasury market play out for a bit. And uh, that's going to take some time to kind of work through here, right? Now, this is super important what I'm showing you right now in front of you. Okay. That chart right there is extremely important. This is the uh, Invesco S&P 500 equal weight ETF. So this one takes away all the crazy weightings of the market, like Apple's as big of a weight in this stock and those sorts of things, okay? This baby is now negative for the year, which goes to show you the real, like, has this year been necessarily a great market for the year, great year for the market? And the answer to that is absolutely not. This has not been a great year for the stock market, okay? It's been a great year for a few select stocks that are big weights in the indexes. And so it makes the Qs look better than it is in reality. It makes the SP 500 look better than it is in reality. It makes the Dow 30 look better than it is in reality. But when you go beneath the surface, we're not in a strong market. We are not in some super bullish market right now. We're just not. And I'm going to take you through in a moment some of these super famous companies that are hitting new lows today. New lows today, and we're not talking about you know new lows on in terms of this year, we're talking about multi year lows at this point in time. This next one is pretty telling. Look at this this is the IWM, this is a Russell 2000 ETF, right? This baby has now gone negative, okay? So now small cap stocks, and by the way, small cap stocks are, are you know been on the floor for like two years now at this point in time. Small cap stocks have been beaten down for like two years, okay? So you got equal weight now negative, you got Russell now negative. Ooh, okay. We got an intriguing market now, okay? Now look at Scott's Miracle Grow. I think everybody knows Scott's Miracle Grow. You might have used it in your own yard before, okay? This stock down another 8% here today. It can't find a bottom anywhere in sight. It's now down 28% just in the past five years. You know, it's stock after stock after stock. Target's down another 3.5% today. It, I mean, it doesn't matter. It, nothing matters. Nothing matters. All that matters is targets down and is down and is down. And, and it doesn't matter if they report good news. It doesn't matter anything right now. The relent, it's been relentless selling with this stock. Anil is downgraded again today is 3.5%, right? It's creating a steel deal for any buyers out there over this next three to six months, which I certainly will be. Uh, but outside of that, you know, it's just, uh, it's just a devastated stock right now. Campbell's Flip and Flapjack and Soup. Are you joking me? Are you kidding me? Okay. This stock is now down nearly 31% year to date, folks. Down another almost 4% today. What's going on here? What's going on? This isn't right. The SP 500 was about break even today. And you got Campbell's Soup down another 4%. The selling pressure is relentless. 
in regards to these super famous companies. Relentless. General Mills down another 2.2% here today. That stock's down down 27%. And I, I'm telling you guys, when you're seeing Campbell's Soup and you're seeing General Mills down 27% this year, 30% plus this year, this is like, you know, a stock like Amazon being down 50 plus percent. This is like Apple being down 50 plus percent because these just aren't the type of stocks you would ever expect to move this much in a year. Dollar Tree still can't find a bottom. This one down another 1%. This one is flirting with going under 100 bucks, man. Dollar Tree, who would have thunk it? I mean, we could be under a 30% plus down year to date on Dollar Tree. SJ Smuckers, what are we talking? Jelly or jam? SM Smuckers is now down over 25% year to date. Come on, man, another 1% down? But then check out this stock and be ready to have your minds blown, okay? Check out this next stock. It is Costco. Costco just hit an all-time high today. Today, folks, okay? What in the world? Mind-blowing, absolutely mind-blowing. Like, what do you think Costco sells? It sells all these companies, you know, we just went through their products like SJM Smuckers and General Mills and Campbell's Soup and all these other brand name companies, right? And yet you got Costco there setting a new all-time high for that stock. That's incredible. I mean, absolutely incredible, right? Costco's in its own league. 3M down another 3.6% here today. And remember, today was not some sort of bad day for the S&P 500 or NASDAQ. It could have been, but it wasn't, right? And that was after the debt deal news came out. So a lot of people were expecting today to be a great day in the market, right? Because uh, obviously the government announced the 45-day, uh, let's call it extension here, and to try to still figure things out. So a lot of people were looking at that as like, oh, it's going to be a great green day. Whew, the indexes, you know, barely eked out some gains. But look at when you go beneath Apple and Microsoft and a few of the biggest big dogs and Meta and those sorts of stocks, and you dig deeper and you find a 3M down 3.6%. This this is not a bullish market. This is we're, this is a bear market. I mean, the, the bottom line is you look at when you see every one of these super famous stocks down another 3%, down 28% year to date, 29%, 30%. It says you're in a bear market. That's a, that's the most confusing part of this whole thing. We're basically in a bear market, but it's the numbers aren't adding up because of this the heavy weighting skewed toward the very top of this this game, right? By the way, 3M could be an interesting play in 2024. A lot of their legal stuff, I don't want to say is necessarily behind the company in 2024, but it's starting to get figured out now at this point in time, so could be an interesting play in 2024. Mick overvalued, excuse me, McDonald's stock. Look at this baby, okay? This was nearly $300 a share back in the summertime. Now pushing down to 257, down another two plus percent here today. What's going on here? Boeing down another 2% today. This one back in the summertime was $238. It's down to 187 now at this point in time, right? Boeing continues to get hammered day after day after day. Speaking about hammered, Verizon down another 2%. When's this stock bottom? It still is showing no signs of, of bottoming in regards to Verizon, right? That's incredible. Still showing no signs of bottoming. It's just down and it's down and it's down. Silver, Silver's move today blew my mind, folks. Silver was down 4.5% on the day. 4.5%? What? For SLV? Come on, man. That seems... A mm, little strange there, okay? A little strange. We got weird stuff going on in the market. Silver down 4.5% in a day. I mean, if the S&P 500 was down, I don't know, 6% 6 today or something, I, I would have been like, okay, I could see silver being down 4.5%. Uh, what? What is going on, okay? WTI down 2.3%. That's one definitely good piece of news I have for you guys here today, okay? We definitely need to see WTI come down. This baby has been what's keeping inflation overall CPI. This is what's keeping it high, folks. And you've got to understand, it's more than just, oh, I go to the gas pump, I have to, you know, pay more to the gas station, okay? It's more than that. It goes into transportation of all goods out there, right? I mean, at the end of the day, at some point in time, that stuff has to get transported. Whether it's, uh, you know, from the Amazon Fulfillment Center to your home, uh, not all the, the vehicles are Rivians and electric vehicles yet, right? So whether we're talking that, whether we're talking about obviously the semi industry or the trucking industry, right? This gets flowed into everything across the board. And so we need to continue to see a weakness in WTI for the next several months. So we can hopefully kill down CPI once and for all and get into that 2% range. 
because that will be a breath of fresh air for the market. Once we get into the 2% range and out of this three area, whoo, will that be a, let's call it a load off the shoulders of the uh, financial markets? I can tell you that, right? GSG was down about a percent here today. Uh, this baby has been falling basically for almost a month now at this point in time. It reached highs back in September 10th of 2023. So things are starting to go our way in the commodity space, but we have a long way to go in regards to that, right? Banking stocks got hit pretty hard today. Look at Ally Financial was down nearly 4%. Deutsche Bank, my favorite bank to pronounce, Deutsche Bank, down about 3.5%. Wells Fargo, down over 3%. What do we got? Banking fear now uh, creeping into the market at this point in time, right? The KRE, the regional banking index, down about 2.5%. That's flirting with going under 40 bucks. What if you, here's a good fear greed index uh, gauge if you want, okay? Regional banks go under 40, you're getting a lot of fear in the market, okay? You go over 50 for the regional bank index, you're feeling a little greedy in the market. But I'm telling you, we go under 40, that means greedy, greedy, greedy in this market, okay? Or excuse me, not greedy, greedy, greedy. I mean, uh, fearful, fearful, fearful in this market if we go under 40. Bank of America down about 2.5%, SoFi down almost 2% here today. Uh, Goldman Sachs, there was something a little scary that I reacted to today. So I reacted to this video, well, I reacted to like four different videos in my reaction video, right? But one of the videos was Jamie Dimon, okay? And they asked uh, Jamie Dimon, you know, basically saying, oh, we can handle 5% rates. We can handle 6% rates, 7% rates. And the one interviewing him says 8%. Jamie Dimon had to actually pause for a moment there and like think about it. He paused and he's like, yeah, we can handle 8% rates. But the fact that he had to like pause like that is a little scary. And remember, JP Morgan is usually the one bank that you would figure can handle anything. So here's the problem. If he's... If he's having a pause thinking about, could we handle 8% at JP Morgan? Then I could tell you a lot of the weaker banks can't even handle 6% rates or 7% rates. If he's got to be like thinking about it, like, could we actually handle 8%? I'm just telling you, the weaker guys can't even handle 6 or 7% rates. So we're about maxed out here, folks, okay? If rates go any higher, I can tell you it's going to be very detrimental to the banking system and we could have huge systemic problems in the banking system, okay? And I think that is why you're seeing a lot of weakness start to play into a lot of these banking stocks in, in, in regards to fears there, right? Now, something's weird going on with this Tricon residential. Maybe they're way over leveraged and there's potential huge problems there, but I'm just, I keep this stock on my watch list for housing stocks. Something's going on there, man. It was down another 5% here today. Something strange is going on. I don't know what it is, they did buy a lot of homes, a lot of property. So maybe there's something going on. I don't know. I might have to dig in there and see if their balance sheet's a mess. But um, that one's acting a little too suspicious. So let's call it that. Boston Properties hit another 3.4% here today. You know, anything in the commercial real estate space, oh, people want no pieces of these stocks right now. Okay. Rocket Companies under $8 now. It's a $7 range, right? Now, Toll Brothers, my put options, my hedge on toll is starting to print a little money here. We're now up already 26% on this one. I don't even think the housing stocks have really gotten hit that hard yet. Okay. So we're up 26%, but I'm just telling you, Things could get hit a lot harder than the way they've been hit in regards to housing. Like, just rem just keep this in mind, okay? If, the, if we start to get real recession fears and we start to get that S&P 500 down, like, toll will fall 15, 20, 30% easily, fast, fast, too. It'll happen in a matter of a month or two. Um, so, I don't know. We'll see what's happening there. I like my hedge. Um, obviously, toll's been printing money uh, the last several years, including this year. But there is a lot of fear about what I'm about to show you, and that is mortgage rates, okay? This is, if you've got a credit score between 700 and about 720, and you do 20% down here in Vegas, or we can sort of say in Nevada in general, right? You're an 8% plus 30-year mortgage now. 8% plus, folks, okay? And remember, 700 to 720, that's not bad credit. That's like, that's decent. That's decent. You could, some would even consider that good credit score, Okay. Let's say you've got a great credit score. So you're over 800. On a 500K loan amount, and you do 20% down, which not everybody even does 20% down. So you do 20% down. You're nearly 7.7% for a 30-year fixed at this point in time, folks. Okay? It's a problem. I'm telling you that's a problem. It's going to show up in a major, major way. Now, we had the bad news, but this is where we get into the mixed signals of these financial markets right now. Because I have some things to show you that could be extremely 
actually bullish for us in 2024 and in future years, okay? So the small business, I don't know if you guys ever look at some of these different indicators on what's going on in the economy and sentiment in the actual underlying economy and those sorts of things, okay? The small business optimism index decreased uh, 0.6 points, basically, in August to 91.3, the 20th consecutive month below the 49-year average of 98. So small business index in terms of you know optimism has been horrible for well over a year and a half now at this point in time, okay? Now, keep this in mind. You could look at that and you could say, that's bad news, bad news, bad news, okay? I could look at that and say, well, if we've been under, uh, let's call it not optimistic for over 20 months, let's just imagine things get a little better in 2024. What does that bode? Because I always feel like the small business is really what runs the U.S. economy. If small business is not feeling so good, the overall economy is not feeling so good. If small business is feeling very good, then the overall economy is going to be feeling very good. Okay, I'm I'm a huge believer in small business. And so what happens if at some point in 2024, small business optimism starts to tick up? And what happens if we just get back to historical norms of, let's say, 98 for that reading, right? Well, that would be pretty bullish. That would actually be pretty bullish. So we're already been in a crap place for 20 months. There's a potential it could get better. Of course, you could say it could get worse as well, right? But you can look at these things from kind of both angles there. That would be helpful if we could get small business optimism in a, in a healthy place, which is not. Consumer confidence index. So we've come back quite a bit when it comes to consumer confidence index. This is a United States Michigan consumer confidence index, which they've done since like the 50s. We've come back quite a bit from the 2022 lows, which was the lowest in history. Actually, around June 2022, that was the lowest in history for the sentiment survey, right? But we're still at a horrible spot. Horrible spot. Now, let's imagine inflation stays at bay in 2024. And let's imagine consumer confidence improves in 2024. And maybe we just get back to more normalish ranges, which we are not in normalish ranges. We're still in bad ranges. Let's imagine we just get back to normal ranges. Well, shoot. That would be very bullish for us overall. So those are things to consider for 2024, that if consumer confidence got in a lot better place, if small business optimism got in a much better place, that's going to be overall very helpful to company earnings to spend out there and those sorts of things. Okay, so that's just some food for thought. And honestly, the biggest reason why consumer confidence has been in a horrible place for the last two years, and the reason small business optimism has been in a horrible place for the last two years, guess why? inflation, okay? If you're a small business and you keep seeing your costs go up and up and up and you keep having to like raise price in your customers and then like, I don't know if I can keep raising it, right? At some point in time, you're, you start to lose uh, confidence and you start to lose confidence quick, right? Same thing with consumers. If you're dealing with higher gas prices all the time and you got to pay four or five, six dollars every time you go to gas up your vehicle, at some point in time that starts to weigh on you and you start to not feel too optimistic. And if you've got to go to the grocery store and everything seems like a bag of carrots is 20% more than it used to be, that's a problem, right? That's going to cause you to have much less, let's call it confidence than you had previously. Now, we have a certain scenario going on, which is look at Instacart here today. Instacart was down 9% plus here today, folks. Okay, I'm no big news. Instacart's just down huge. This is not the time to take companies public. This shows you there's still no risk appetite. All people want, if they want to own anything in the market, is they want to own Apple, Microsoft, Meta, and a few other stocks. And that's it. They don't, want, they don't have any appetite for Campbell's Soup. They don't have any appetite for Target or General Mills or, or any of those stocks. Then you know damn well they don't have any freaking patience for Instacart. Okay? This is not the time, you know, I I just want to know who is so desperate that they had to take Instacart public. Like, that's crazy to me. Like, this is not the time. We're arguably still in a bear market when you look at the equal weighted indexes, right? Crazy. Kellogg's was down massively here today. Kellogg's did this strange thing, which, but once again, Kellogg's super famous company. It's, it's put in that category of Campbell's Soup and General Mills and all those other super famous companies that everybody knows, right? Kellogg's, the cereal business, begins trading as standalone company Kellogg. WK Kellogg, a spinoff of Kellogg's cereal business, began trading on the New York Stock Exchange. As part of the separation, Kellogg has been renamed Kellanova, <laughs> but is still trading under the ticker symbol K. Shareholders receive one share of WK Kellogg for every four shares of Kellogg, 
Oh, what a confusing situation they owned on September 21st. Nonetheless, folks, investors clearly don't like this move. They're spinning out the cereal business from basically their stack business, which, if I recall, they own like Pringles, they own like Cheez Its and some other brands that are, you know, obviously very famous brands, but weird situation there. It smells of desperation. I think a lot of these guys are getting desperate and they're like, you know, see their stock prices just going down and down and down and they feel like they got to do something. And so they're like, oh, let's split off the snack business from the cereal business. At the end of the day, man, there's nothing you can do. They just did that and their stock's still down massively. There's nothing you can do right now. The bottom line is no one wants a piece of any of these companies. Value stocks and dividend stocks are being taken out to the woodshed, as they would say. And no one wants these stocks. You can split them up. You can do this. You can do that. You can... It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter until people are ready to buy these babies again, which is likely coming in 2024. But um, as of right now, there's no appetite for these stocks. Just as there was nothing Tesla could do last year, there was nothing Meta can do. You know, you could say, well, they did the, the cost-cutting measures and those sorts of things and fired some employees. Sure, you can do some of that. But ultimately, at the end of the day, it wasn't going to make a huge impact on the stock until people were well, ready to buy those stocks again, which was obviously this year, right? So, for, for thought. No, we got a mixed signals market, right? Everything I just went over to you, it's all mixed bag. It's all mixed signals. That's why I have the, the picture here with like green lights, red lights, green lights, red lights. We've got mixed signals going on, folks. I've never seen it this confusing in the financial market, certainly in my 15 years of being in this game. And um, even looking back at past time periods before that, I don't think we've ever seen this confusing of a situation where you still have inflation as a problem, but it's not nearly the problem it once was. The Fed's got rates in a very elevated place based upon anywhere we had them in the last 20 years. You've got yield inversion that we've almost never seen in history. You got TLT at, you know, the prices it was back at like 07, right? You obviously have recession fears. You have continued slowdown fears. You have companies that still are having trouble getting workers that if they need workers, which is an interesting dynamic, you have strikes going on, which is, you know, creating a dilemma where Ford just had to lay off another 300 plus workers. I think Ford's had to lay off 900 plus workers now at this point in time, because obviously the strikes are going on. We're in a weird time, man, a weird time. And I don't think, I don't think it is a prudent decision to think you have it all figured out right now. Because just keep in mind, the smartest macroeconomic economists in the world all predicted we'd be in recession this year. And then the consumer came in much stronger than expected. Obviously, the stock market indexes have performed much better than expected, really because of the biggest of the big dog companies, right? And the consumer spent a lot more than anybody expected. So all the macroeconomists were all wrong. All of them. They were all convinced. And the smartest minds in Wall Street were also all calling for a recession in a horrible year for the stock market this year. They were all wrong as well. That's why I say... Don't, don't be so convinced you got it all figured out in this market. You have to prep for several different scenarios. This is not one of those clear-cut, dry, like, it's going to be this, it's going to be that. No, okay? Here's what, here's what I'm doing, okay? You can choose to do this or not. I don't really care. This is what I'm doing. I'm staying hedged in the market. I'll be doing more hedges this month. I could potentially do more hedges in November and December for 2024 as well because there's certainly a lot of scenarios that can happen where things could weaken more. Uh, buying dip in great companies, which there's a long list of great companies now at this point in time. They're at 52-week lows, multi-year lows, multi-decade lows. And I mean, it's a long list of them, okay? So buying the dip in those great companies. Number three, keeping a little cash around. It's a great time to have a little cash around as well. You can get pretty much 5% on it. If you're in a treasury, if you're in a savings account, you can get around 5%. There's nothing wrong with that. We haven't been able to get those sorts of numbers, certainly in my entire adult lifetime. Since 2008, never been able to get like 5% on your money. Like this is the old freak time you can actually do it, right? And the fourth thing, and this is super important, do not think you're right and you've got to figure it out. Uh, whether we have a no landing, a soft landing, a medium landing, a hard landing, stagflation, no, don't think you got it all figured out right now. You think you got it all figured out, you're going to probably make some poor investment decisions out there and either go all in the market or all out of the market or or go all short the market or something like that in we know how that plays out, man. We know how that plays out. In 2021, it was a year of margin. Everything's going to fly the moon. 2022, flips. All of a sudden, it's a year of going max uh, shorting all into the end of the year, right? And by the time people catch up to where, you know, the move's happening, they already missed it. So for instance, by the time like retail was piling into short trades and buying put options, things like that, it was like the fourth quarter 
of 2022. <laughs> By that time, a lot of these stocks, they were all, you know, betting, you know, Tesla, oh, Tesla's going to go to $60. It's going to go to $50. They already missed it. They already, already missed it. The stock had already fallen to $100. They should have been doing that like a year before that, right? And so by the time people get caught up to this next kind of trade, I guess we can say, is you already lost it. So don't think you got it all figured out in this market, folks, okay? Plan for different scenarios happening. That's exactly what I'm doing. And at the end of the day, in 2024, if the market collapses on us, and let's say SP500 goes down 20, 30, 40%, horrible year, let's say, I will be laughing all the way to the bank because my hedges will print disgusting amounts of money. And then I'll be able to flip those hedges for ridiculous profits into long positions at super cheap prices because there's already a long list of stocks at super cheap, pr cheap prices, right? I'm also not banking that the market's going to tank in 2024. This is a scenario where the market actually goes up and has a pretty good year in 2024, right? And so I'm making sure I buy a lot of these beaten down dog stocks that people have just thrown to the wayside at this point in time, right? So I'm making sure I take advantage of those deals. And there's also a potential where, you know, it's just some volatility next year, but we really don't go anywhere. We're kind of standing in place, right? And for me, that's perfectly fine as well. Because in that situation, I continue to take advantage of a lot of stocks that are very attractive pricing. If I can get very famous, successful, great companies, truly great companies, at five-year lows, three-year lows, seven-year lows, 10-year lows, 15-year lows, I will take that deal. And if you want to give me that for a longer period of time, I'll take as many freaking shares off your hands as I can possibly take. At the end of the day, this is an ownership game. I'm trying to own as much of the world as I can possibly own. I want to own as much as, of great companies as I can possibly own, right? And if you look at my top tier positions in the public account, for instance, these are the greatest of the great companies in the world, right? Meta, Tesla, Amazon, like these are the best of the best. And so if people want to sell me different types of the best of the best, which are more in the value and dividend category, I'll take those off your hands. Like, give me as many shares as freaking possible, okay? I appreciate everybody joining me as always, folks. Thank you so much for being subscribed. Make sure you check out the pinned comment down there, folks, and take advantage of these two workshops I put together for you guys. This one's if you're in your first three years of investing. It's called Investing Foundations. It's a five-part workshop. It's absolutely free to access. It's a pinned comment down there. And the second one is how I find 10X stocks. This might be for a little more of advanced investors. That's also pinned comment down there. And uh, it's about a 30-minute video in regards to that one. should help you out tremendously. Much love and have a great day.